Hello. Welcome to our meeting to discuss the competitive range. My name is Jack White. I am a procuring contracting officer. Let me introduce to you Carol, the attorney. Lieutenant Torres, the source selection chair. And Colonel Rose, the source selection authority, or SSA. I called you all here this morning to discuss an important issue for our upcoming source selection. The solicitation has announced, by including the provision at FAR 52.215-1 with its alternate 1, that the government intends to have discussions with those offerers determined to be within the competitive range. Therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to make sure we all have the same understanding of how the competitive range determination is made and what issues are involved. What a great idea. The competitive range determination is a critical step in the competitive negotiation process that often doesn't get the attention and understanding that it deserves. Keep in mind that a competitive range determination would also be required if the solicitation announced, by including the provision at FAR 52.215-1 without its alternate one, that the government intends to award without discussions, but the government later determines that the best interests of the government would be served by entering into discussions. Thanks, Carol. Since you brought up the competitive negotiation process, let's look at where the competitive range determination occurs in that process. You can see from this chart that the competitive range determination is made after the initial evaluation of proposals is completed. It may also be reassessed after discussions have been conducted but before final proposal revisions are requested. Unless, of course, you are awarding without discussions, in which case there would be no competitive range determination. You would just go right to the source selection decision once the initial evaluation is completed. Except where we are awarding without discussions, are there always two competitive range determinations? There's always at least one after the initial evaluation of proposals is completed. But there is nothing that prohibits you from having more than one. The second competitive range determination on Jack's chart, the reassessment before requesting final proposal revisions, is a best practice. FAR 15.307B says, at the conclusion of discussions, each offer still in the competitive range shall be given an opportunity to submit a final proposal revision. Therefore, it is good procurement practice to reassess the competitive range right before requesting final proposal revisions in order to determine which offers are still in the competitive range. In fact, it is also good practice for the contracting officer to continually reassess the competitive range as discussions and proposal evaluations proceed. This will ensure that neither the government nor the offerers waste time and resources keeping a proposal in the competitive range if that proposal no longer has a legitimate chance of winning. Is it part of my responsibility as a source selection authority to make this determination? No. FAR 15.306C says that the contracting officer is responsible for making the competitive range determination. But the Army FAR supplement at 5115.306C says that the source selection authority must approve the competitive range determination. So, as SSA, you need to fully understand what a competitive range determination is all about. That's right. So what is my involvement in this determination? You and the SSEB organization that you are in charge of are responsible for providing the information upon which the competitive range determination is based. In other words, the proposal evaluation results. Okay, we've been talking about who makes this determination and when it is made, but can someone explain to me exactly what this determination is? Of course. The competitive range determination is an assessment of the competitiveness of the proposals when compared to each other. The results of all evaluation factors price or cost as well as all non-cost factors must be considered. It's important to emphasize that this is a relative assessment of the merit of the proposal against each other at the point in time when the determination is made. Therefore, this relative standing against each other can, 
and probably will, change at different points in time. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying about relative assessment and that it can change over time. The competitive range determination is a snapshot in time. Let me draw an analogy for you. Let's say you are watching a thoroughbred horse race. At any time, as all the horses are racing around the track, you can take a snapshot and compare where each horse is relative to the other horses in the race at that point in time. Based on that snapshot, you can use your subjective judgment to determine, at that point in time, which horses you think have the best chance of winning the race, and which horses have little or no chance. That determination can certainly change if you take other snapshots at different points in time during the race. It will depend on where each of the horses is relative to the other horses when you take the snapshot. For example, the determination you would make at the quarter mile post might be totally different than the one you would make as the horses round the final turn and enter the home stretch. However, as the horses enter the home stretch, you have a lot better information upon which to base your determination because you are closer to the finish line. I like to think of the competitive range determination after the initial evaluation as analogous to looking at the race as the horses enter the final turn. A reassessment of the competitive range after discussions, but before the request for final proposal revisions, would then be analogous to looking at the race as the horses are in the final half of the home stretch. At each of these points in time, you can look at the relative positions of each horse and make your own subjective determination of which horses have the best chance of winning the race. Those would be the horses you would include in the competitive range. That's a pretty good analogy. It gives me a much better understanding of what you mean by relative assessment and how it can vary at different points in time. Yes, and that same analogy is also a good way to illustrate a very important caution related to the competitive range determination. When making this relative assessment, your judgment should not be based upon ratings or cutoffs internally predetermined by the evaluation team or the contracting officer before the initial evaluations have been completed. What does that mean? It means that neither the evaluation team nor the contracting officer should internally predetermine rules such as all proposals with at least acceptable ratings are in or only those proposals with ratings greater than acceptable are in to use when conducting the relative assessment needed to support the competitive range determination. The relative assessment must be based solely upon the information current at the time the competitive range determination is made. Using the horse race analogy, you cannot predetermine, before the race starts, the specific time or position that a horse has to achieve at a particular point in the race to still be one of the horses that has the best chance of winning at that point. For example, a slow time might still be competitive at the final turn if all the other horses are also running slow times. Or, even though a horse is in the third place at the final turn, which might ordinarily mean that horse still has a good chance to win, you may determine that horse has little or no chance to win because the horses in first and second place are already 15 lengths ahead of the third place horse. So is it fair to say that because the competitive range determination is a relative assessment, which is very much dependent upon the facts of the particular acquisition, it might actually be possible to have unacceptable proposals included in a particular competitive range or maybe even acceptable proposals excluded from a particular competitive range yes that's correct each competitive range determination will be unique to its own particular set of facts okay there must be some sort of standard or yardstick or benchmark we should be using during this relative assessment to determine which proposals to include in competitive range and which proposals to exclude right Yes, that's correct. That standard is set forth in FAR 15.306C. Let's look carefully at what it says. FAR 15.306C, 1, says, Based on the ratings of each proposal against all evaluation criteria, the contracting officer shall establish a competitive range comprised of all the most highly rated proposals, unless the range is further reduced 
for purposes of efficiency pursuant to paragraph C2 of this section. And FAR 15.306 C2 says, after evaluating all proposals in accordance with 15.305A and paragraph C1 of this section, the contracting officer may determine that the number of most highly rated proposals that might otherwise be included in the competitive range exceeds the number at which an efficient competition can be conducted, provided the solicitation notifies offerers that the competitive range can be limited for purposes of efficiency, C52.215-1F4. The contracting officer may limit the number of proposals in the competitive range to the greatest number that will permit an efficient competition among the most highly rated proposals. That's a lot of words. Can you boil it down for me? Sure. The FAR is telling us that we should exclude all but the most highly rated proposals from the competitive range. The FAR is also telling us that we can further reduce the number of most highly rated proposals included in the competitive range if such a reduction is needed to permit an efficient competition to be conducted. Wow, that's a pretty hard-hitting standard, isn't it? Yes, it is. But let me give you a little bit of background that might help you understand why. The 1998 Part 15 rewrite gave us this new, more aggressive standard for determining which proposals are to be included in the competitive range. Prior to the Part 15 rewrite, the standard for the competitive range determination was that you include any proposal which has a reasonable chance to win. The old FAR language even advised that when there is doubt as to whether a proposal should be included in the competitive range, that proposal should be included. But the Part 15 rewrite changed that to the language Jack just read. As Jack said, under this new language, we are only supposed to include most highly rated proposals and can even reduce the competitive range further to achieve efficient competition. While the emphasis under the old competitive range standard was on inclusion, the emphasis under this new standard is on exclusion. To put it another way, the old competitive range rule of thumb used to be when in doubt, keep them in. But the new rule of thumb is when in doubt, throw them out. Carol, do you have any insight into why the Part 15 rewrite made such a change to the competitive range standard? Yes. The legislative history of the FAR Part 15 rewrite makes it very clear that the broad purpose of the rewrite was to re-engineer the competitive negotiation process to make it more effective, more efficient, and less costly for both industry and the government. Although the authors of Part 15 rewrite considered keeping the old competitive range standard, they finally decided there were several specific advantages to be gained from this new, more aggressive standard that would benefit the rewrite's broad purpose. First, the new standard will encourage offerers to submit better, more robust initial proposals because only the most highly rated proposals will be included in the competitive range. Second, an offerer included in the competitive range will know that its proposal has a real good chance of winning and therefore it will be in that offerer's best interest to continue to compete aggressively during the rest of the negotiation process. And finally, those offerers eliminated from the competitive range will be spared the additional effort and expense of pursuing an award they have little chance of winning. Very interesting. Sounds like they really want contracting officers to make competitive range determinations that will avoid the additional, and largely futile, effort and cost imposed on both industry and government when too many proposals that don't really have a chance of winning are kept in the competitive range. Yes, the Part 15 rewrite authors even said that, during the drafting of this new standard, government agency comments indicated that award is most often made to one of the three most highly rated proposals in the competitive range. Based on this information, the Part 15 rewrite authors were of the opinion that this new, more aggressive standard would have no adverse impact on the final award decision but they felt it would ensure that offerers with little probability of winning would be told early on that their competitive position does not merit the additional expense the offerer would incur by continuing a largely futile attempt to win the contract. Pretty clear that they want us to make some tough decisions on these competitive range determinations. That's true, 
But remember that the Part 15 rewrite also gave us a powerful tool to use in conjunction with this new competitive range standard so that you have better information to base those tough decisions on. This powerful new tool is the new type of exchange, with the offerers called communications. As we have discussed before, this new type of exchange with the offerers is broader in scope than clarifications, but occurs before the initial competitive range determination. The authors of Part 15 Rewrite recognize that if the government is going to be more aggressive in excluding proposals from the competitive range, then the government should also have as much information as possible about those proposals before making that determination. In other words, we should be smart buyers and make the most educated and efficient competitive range determination possible. Communications is the tool they gave us to accomplish that. How much discretion do we have in making these tough competitive range determinations? A lot. The determination of whether a proposal is in the competitive range is considered a matter within the judgment of the procuring agency. If protested, that judgment and the evaluation upon which it is based will only be reviewed for reasonableness and consistency with the solicitation criteria and applicable statutes and regulations. A protester's mere disagreement with the agency's determination does not show that it lacked a reasonable basis. But you must be sure to thoroughly document the contract file with a written explanation of the logic and rationale that is the basis for your determination. This has been a very useful discussion. Yes, I learned a lot. I agree. Before we break, let me just quickly remind you that when you determine that an offerer is to be excluded from the competitive range, that offerer must be promptly notified in writing of this decision. That offerer will then have the right to request a debriefing, either before award or after. So be prepared to provide that debriefing. Thanks, Carol. And thank you all for coming.